my sadness. My brother's dogs, he keeps at school, but for my part, he stays me here at home unkept. Call you that keeping for a gentleman of my birth? His horses are bred better. This is it, Adam. That grieves me. And the spirit of my father, which I think is within me, begins to mutiny against the servitude. I will no longer endure it. Yonder comes my master, your brother. Go apart, Adam, and thou shalt hear how people shake me up. Now, sir, what make you here? Nothing. I'm not taught to make anything. What am I you then, sir? Mary, I'm helping you, Mark, which God made. A poor, unworthy brother of yours with idleness. You better employ it, be not a while. Shall I keep your hogs and eat husks with them? What prodigal portion have I spent to come to such a penury? Do you know where you are, sir? Oh, very well, sir. You're in your orchard. Know you from before? I'm better than him by the time or know you me. You are my elder brother, and you should so know me. But the same tradition takes not away our blood. I have as much my father <coughs> in it as you. What, boy? Come, elder brother, you are too young for this. Wilt thou lay hands on me, thou villain? I am no villain. I am the youngest son of Sir Roland de Bois. He was my father, and he is thrice villain that says such a father be God villains. Were thou not my brother, I would not take this hand from my throat till my other hand had pulled up the tongue for saying so. Sweet master, be patient for your father's sake. Ye of course. Let me go, I say. I will not talk, please. You shall hear me. My father charged you to give me good education. You will train me like a peasant. I will not long be troubled with you. I pray you leave me. Get you with him, you old dog. Little dog, my reward. Most true, I lost my teeth in your service. God be with my old master. You do not spoke such a word. Is it even so? I will physic your rightness, and yet no vows of crowns either. Holla, Dennis! Calls, Your Worship. Was not Charles, the Duke's wrestler, here to speak with me? So please you, he's here at the door. Call him in. Will be a good way. And tomorrow the wrestling is. Tomorrow to your worship. Good Monsieur Charles, what's the new news at the new court? There is no news at, at the court, sir, but the old news. That is, the old duke is banished by his younger brother, the new duke. Can you tell if Rosaline, the old duke's daughter, be banished with her father? Oh, no. For the duke's daughter, her cousin, he so loves her that she would fain follow her into exile, or die to be without her. And we're two ladies loved as they do. Where will the old duke look? They say he's already in the forest of Arden, and many married men with him. There they live like the old Robin from the Greenwood. What, you wrestle tomorrow before the new duke? There you do I, sir. And I am given secretly to understand that your younger brother Orlando has a disposition to try a fall against me. For your love, he being an intender, I'd be loath to boil. Charles, I thank thee for thy love, which thou shalt find thy most kindly of heart. I myself have noticed of my brother's purpose herein, and how by under my hands he labored to dissuade thee from it. But I'll tell thee, Charles, he is resolute. It is the stubbornest young fellow in France, full of ambition, a secret villainous contrivance against me, his natural brother. Therefore, use thy discretion. I did sleep on his his neck as his finger. I am heartily glad I came hither, Chief. If your brother come tomorrow, I'll give him his payment. God keep your worship. Where are you, Charles? Now I will stir the scapes. I hope I shall see an end. 
for my soul, yet I know not why. Hates nothing more than he. Yet he's gentle, never schooled, yet learned. Full, noble device of all sorts, enchantingly beloved, <coughs> indeed so much in the heart of the world. But it shall not be so long. This wrestler shall clear all. And would you yet I were merrier? Would you teach me to forget a banished father? Herein I see thou lovest me with not the full weight that I love thee. If thy father had banished my father, thy uncle, I could have taught my love to take thy father for mine. Well, I will forget the condition of my estate to rejoice in yours. No, my father hath no child but I, and truly, when he dies, thou shalt be his heir. For what he hath taken from thy father, for course, I will render thee again in affection. If break us so, let me turn monster for my rose, my dear rose, Mary. From henceforth I will, and devise sports. Let's see. What think you of falling in love? Mary, I pray thee do to make sports, but love no man in good earnest. Fortune sends the fool to pass the argument. Mistress, you must come away to your own father. Were you made the messenger? No, by my honor, I was bid to come for thee. Where learned you that, O oh fool? Of a certain night he swore by his honor that the pancakes were good, and by his honor that the mustard was not. Now I'll stand to it that the mustard was good, and the pancakes were not. And yet, it's not that I forsworn. Ah, Mary, <laughs> unmuzzle your wisdom. Yes, stand you both forth, stroke your tears, and swear <laughs> by your beards that I am a knave. By our bids, if we have them now on. <laughs> and by my neighbor, if I had it, then it were. But if you swear by now that is not, you are not forsworn. Neither was the knight. Swear if by his honor, for he never had any. <laughs> <laughs> if he did, he swore away long beware before he ever saw those pancakes or that mustard. By my troth, <laughs> that speak is true. Here comes Monsieur Le Bon Monsieur, Monsieur Le Bon, what's the news? Fair princess, your father, you have lost much good sport. Sport? Of what color? You amaze me, ladies. I would have told you of good wrestling, which you have lost the sight of. You tell us the manner of the wrestling? I will tell you the beginning, and if it please your ladyships, you may see the end. For here where you are, they are coming to perform it. There comes an old man, and his Three sons, three proper young men of excellent growth and presence. The first wrestles with Charles, the Duke's wrestler, who in a moment threw him. And broke three of his ribs. So he served the second, and so the third. The poor old man, the father, taking such pitiful dole over him that all the beholders took part in his weeping. Alas! <laughs> but what is the sport, Monsieur, that the ladies have lost? Why this that I speak of? Thus men may grow wiser every day. This is the first that ever I heard the breaking of ribs. The sport fling. Or I have promised thee. But is there another dose upon your breaking? Shall we see this wrestling coming? You must if you stay here, for here is the place appointed, and they are ready to perform it. Your Monsieur, let us now stay. Challenger. I come but in his 
others do to try me the strength of my youth. Young gentlemen, your spirits are too bold for your years. You have seen the cruel proof of this man's strength to be praying for your own sake and your own safety. To give over this attempt, we would make it our suit with the Duke that the wrestling might not go forward. I beseech you, punish me not, punish me not with your hard thoughts. Let your fair eyes and gentle wishes go with me to my trial. Wherein if I be foiled, one shame that was never gracious. If killed, one dead that was willing to be so. The little strength I have, I would it were with you. And mine to eke out hers. Have with you, go with the desires with you. Come, where is this young gallant that so wishes to lie with his mother? Ready, sir. If you mean mock me, you should have not mocked me before, but come your ways. Now, Hercules, be thy speed, young man. I were I invisible to catch the strong fellow by the leg. Go, Charles! Go, Charles! Get him! Young son? The Duke, 
My father loved his father dearly. Does that therefore ensue that you should love his son dearly? By that I should hate him, for my father hated his father dearly. Yet I hate not Orlando. No, Faith, hate him not for my sake. Do you love him because I do? Look, here comes the Duke, with his eyes full of anger. Mistress, dispatch you with your safety's taste, and get ye from our court. Me, uncle? You, cousin, within these ten days, if thou beest found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou dinest for it. I do beseech your grace, never so much as in thought unborn did I offend your highness. Thus do all traitors, let suffice that I trust thee not. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Your father's daughter, there's enough. So was I when your highness banished him? So was I when your highness took his victim? Treason is not inherited, my lord, or if we do derive it from our friends. What's that to me? My father was no traitor. Dear sovereign, hear me speak. I see that we say it for your sake, else had you with her father ranged along. I did not entreat her to have her state. It was your own pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young at the time to value her, but now I know her, and if she be a traitor, where's so am I? She's too subtle, worthy. In her silence, her patience is very smooth, and this speaks to people, and they pity her. Thou art a fool. She robs you of thy name. For her revoke was my doom which I have passed upon her. She is banished. Pronounce the sentence on me, my liege. I do not live out of her company. You are a fool. Oh, Rosalind, whither wilt thou go? Pray thee, be cheerful. Knowest not the Duke hath banished me, his daughter? That he hath not. No, he hath not. Rosalind lacks the love that she should that thou and I are one. Come, um, divide with me how we may fly. Say what the canvas, I'll go along with thee. Why? Whither shall we go? To seek my uncle in the forest of Arden. Alas, what danger will it be to us, maids as we are, to travel forth so far? I will put myself in mean and poor attire, with a kind of armor smirch my face. Therefore we shall pass along the never stir assailants. Were it not better that I should suit me all points like a man, although lie there in my heart what hidden woman's fear there will. But what shall I call thee when thou art a man? Call me Ganymede. But what will you be called? Something that has reference to my state. No longer Celia, but... Aliana! But cousin, what if we essayed to steal the clownish fool out of thy father's court? Would he not be a comfort to us in our travels? He'll go along the wide road with me. Leave me alone to Rome. Let us wait and get our jewels and treasures together. Thou hidest from pursuit, but we may after my flight. And we go to liberty and not to banishment.
my gentle master, oh, you memory built your own. Why are you so virtuous? More for thou art strong, courageous, and valiant. No, you're not so, some kind of man. The grace is sort of but enemies. Why? What's the matter? Oh, unhappy youth. Come off in this wall, this roof, where the enemy of all your graces lives, your brother. No, the brother, yet the son. Yet the not, yet not the son of whom I'm about to call. His father hath heard your praises, and this night means to burn the lodgings where you used to lie in the name. If he fails for that, we'll find it other means to cut you off. I overheard you in his practices. What? What's the honey go? No matter whether, so you come not here. What? What's the honey go and beg for my food? Or the base and boisterous sword and horse of thievish living on the common road? I will rather divert me to the. I will rather be subjected to the diverted blood and bloody brother. But do not so. I have five and three crowns. The fifty higher are to stake unto your father. Here it is, and I give all it to you. Let me be your servant. Though I look old, I am strong and lusty. Now let me go with you. I'll perform the services of a younger man, not your business and necessities. Oh, good old man, how well me appears the constant service of an antique world. Thou art not for the fashion of these times, where none will but sweat but for promotion. But come thy ways, we will go along together. Master, go on now, fall deep. To last gasp with truth and loyalty. From seventeen years till now, almost four score. Few have died, but I live you no more. Your fortune cannot recompense me better than to die well, not my master's debtor. And to you, gentle sir, and 
to you all. I prithee, if that love or gold can in this desert place by entertainment, bring us where we may rest ourselves and feed. Here's a young maid with travel much oppressed and faints for succor. Fair sir, I pity her, and wish for her sake more than for my own. My fortunes were more able to relieve her. But I am shepherd to another man, and my master's of chose disposition. And besides his coat, his flocks and bounds of feet are now on sale, and at our sheep coat now. By reason of his absence, there's nothing to feed on. But what is, come see him in my voice most welcome to him. What is he that shall buy his flock and pasture? That young swain you saw here in Fodera, well, that little one's for buying any bed. I pray thee, if it stand with honesty, buy thou the cottage, pasture, and flock, and you shall have to pay for it of us. Assuredly, the thing is to be sold. <coughs> if you like it, go with me, if you like upon the board, the pasture, the, the prophet, and this kind of life, I will your very faithful feet of you, and buy it with your gold right suddenly. I like this place, and I could willingly waste my time in it.
little widow, come, I will bear thee to some shelter. And thou shalt not die for lack of dinner, if there was anything in this desert. Cheerily, good Adam. I think Jacob used to be transformed into a beast, for I can nowhere find him like a man. My lord, he is even going to choose a man who is hearing of a song. If he grow musical, you will have surely discorded in his spirits. Go seek him. Tell him I would speak with him. He saved my labor by his own approach. How now, my lord? What a life is this, that your poor friends must prove your company? What? You look married? A fool! A fool! I met a fool in the forest, as I do live by... Boom! I met a fool who laid himself down and basked him in the sun and railed on Lady Fortune in good terms. Good morrow, fool, quoth I. No, sir, quoth he. Call me not fool to him. Heaven hath sent me fortune. And then he drew a dial from his hawk and looking at with lack of stars says, Very wisely. It is ten o'clock. Thus missy, quoth he, how the world wags. Tis but an hour ago since it was nine, and our heads <laughs> will be at eleven. And thus from our tower we write and write, and from our tower we rot and rot. Thereby hangs his tail. When I did hear the motley fool thus, moral on the time, <laughs> My lungs begin to crow like a chanticleer. The fools so, be so deep contemplative. I love uh, songs that are making an hour by his dial. Oh, noble fool, worthy fool. Oh, that I were a fool. I am ambitious for mocking coat. How shall that one? It is my only suit. I must have liberty as the wind to blow on whom I please. For so fools have. But who comes here? For bear me no more! Why, I read none yet. Nor shalt thou till necessity be served. What kind should this cock come off? Art thou this bold man by distress, or else to really despise her with good manners? The thorny point of fair distress is taking me from the smooth shelves, really. Yet I am in the bread and no, no surrender. Before bear, I say, he dies that touches any of this fruit, till I and my affairs are answered. And you will not be answered to reason? Not as die. What would you have? Your gentleness shall force us more than your force move us to gentleness. I almost die for food, so let me have it. Sit down and feed. I'm welcome to our table. Speak you so gently? I, I pardon, pardon me. I thought all things in savage here. If ever you looked on better days, if ever you sat at good man's feast, and know it, tis to pity, and be pitied, then let gentleness my strong enforcement be, and the witch host, I blush, and I must work. True, it is to be half seen better days, and sat at good men's feasts, and have drives of drops this curious pity hath engendered. Therefore, sit you down in gentleness. Then forbear, forbear your food a while, like I, like a doe, go to find my farm. There is a poor old man after me, limped many a weary step, in pure love, until he be oppressed with two weak evil of age and hunger. Till he be sufficed, I will not touch a bit. Go seek him out, and do nothing waste till you return. I thank thee, and be blessed for your good comfort. Thou seest, we are not all alone unhappy. This wide, wide universe of fear is as more of what we've had it than we seem where we play. All the world's a stage. So the men and women, really players, they have their exits. And their entrances. One man in his time plays many parts, is actually in seven ages. At first, the infant kneeling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shiny morning face, creepy like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover. Sigh like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. <laughs> then a soldier full of strange jokes and bearded like a pard. Just another sunny quarrel, seeking the bubble.
own reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. Then, the justice, a fair round belly with good cap on line, for wise severe, and beard a formal cut, for wise dog, and modern instances. And so, he plays a part. The sixth age, shift to the lean and slipper had to move, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose, well say, a world too wide for a sharp strength and big manly voice, turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last, see of all the endless strength. Eventful history is a second childness and meal oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Welcome. Set down your venerable burden and let him feed. I thank you most for him. So hard you need. I scarce can speak to thank you for myself. Welcome. Give us some music and good cousins sing. Three good friends. That the property of 
rain is to wet and fire to burn. That good pasture makes fat sheep, and a great cause of the night is lack of the sun. Such a one is a natural philosopher, Shepherd. Was thou ever in court? No, truly. Another damned. Nay, I hope. Truly, like an ill roasted egg, all on one side. For not being at the court, your reason. Well, if thou never wast in court, thou never sawest good manners. If thou never, thou never sawest good manners, thy manners must be sin. Wickedness is sin, sin is damnation. Truly, thou art your parents' state, Shepherd. Not a whit touched her. Those that are good manners in court are as ridiculous in the country as those in the country are most remarkable in court. <coughs> you told me yourself. The courtiers had you. you kiss, you salute not. But you kiss your hands. Such a courtesy would be uncleanly if courtiers were shepherds. Instance, some instance. Why we are still handling are you? <coughs> and uh, those you know are the reason. Do not your courtiers have sweat? And is not the sweat of a man as wholesome as the grease of a monk? A better instance, I say. Besides, our hands are hot. Then your lips shall be a little sooner. Another instance. And our hands are often tarred over with the sidery of our sheep. And would you have us kiss tar? You told me yourself. The courtiers' are, hands are perfumed with civet. Most. Shallow man, learn of the wise, prepare. Simit is of a vase your birth and tar, very keenly flaxen in the cat. You have too courtly a wit for me, I touched him. I'll rest. I am a true laborer. I earn that I eat, get that I wear, own no man hate, envy no man's happiness, glad other man's good, content with my harm, and the greatest of my pride. To see my use grace and my lamb suck. Not seen him since, sir, sir, it cannot be. Find out thy brother wheresoever he is. Free him dead or living, or turn thou no more to seek a living in our territory. All thy lands and things that thou dost call thine do we now cease into our hands. <laughs> oh, that your highness see my heart in this. I never loved my brother in my life. <laughs> More villain thou. Well, push him out of doors. Hang there, and witness the about. Hang there, my verse, and witness the about. O Rosalind, these trees shall be my books, and the barns my thoughts on character. Run, 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 I know car upon every tree, so that every eye which in this forest looks shall see the virtue in this everywhere. Run, 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 I know car upon every tree, the fair, the chaste, and unexpressive sheep. From the east to western end, no jewel is like a Rosalind. Her worth being mounted on the wind through all the world bears Rosalind. All the pictures fairest lined are but black to Rosaline. Let no fair be kept in mind but the fair of Rosaline. All right, you so eight years together, dinners, suppers, and sleeping hours included. Out, fool, for a taste. If a heart do lack a hide, let him seek out Rosaline. If the cat will after kind, so be sure of Rosaline. Winter garments must be lined, so must slender Rosaline. Sweetest nut, sourest rind, but not is Rosaline. <laughs> Peace, you dull fool, I found them on a tree. Truly. Tree yields bad fruit, peace. <laughs> Here comes my sister, reading, stand aside. Tongues all hang on every tree, that civil stage so, for on 
on the fairest bough dwell I, Roz, and Red, teaching all to read, to know, the quintessence of every sprite, Helen's cheek but not her heart, Cleopatra's majesty, and Atlanta's better part, sad Lucretia's modesty, thus Rosalind of many parts, by heavenly song of woods divides, many faces, eyes, and hearts, to have the touches dearest prize, and I, to live and die her slave. Oh, what tedious homily of love! <laughs> I'm not a fool, off a little. Didst thou hear these verses? Oh, yes, I heard them all, and more too, for some had more feet than the verses would bear. <laughs> but didst thou hear these, read these verses without wondering how their names should be hanged and carved on these trees? Knowest you who hath done this? Is it a man? And it's shame you once wore about your neck. Change your color? I prithee, who? Is it? Possible. I prithee now with most petitionary vehemence. Tell me who it is. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful, and most wonderful, and again wonderful, wonderful, and out of all hooping. I prithee, take thy cork out of thy mouth, that I may drink thy tidings. It is young Orlando who tripped up to wrestler's hills, and your heart in both an instant. Nay, but the devil take mocking. Speak sad brow and true maid. In faith, cuz, tis he. Orlando? Orlando! Alas the day! What will I do with my doublet and hose? What said he when I saw him? Did he ask for me? Where remains he? And when wilt thou see him again? Answer me in one word! You have to borrow me my gantrons in your mouth. Tis too great a word for any mouth. Proceed. He lay there stretched long, like a wounded knight. Though it be pity to see such sight, it well becomes the ground. Give me audience, good madame. He was furnished like a hunter. Oh, ominous, he comes to kill my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I would sing my song without but thou bringest me out of tune. Knowest thou not that I am a woman? When I think I must speak. Sweet, say on. Soft, come to, who comes here? Tis he. Spring by and note him. I thank you for your company. For good faith, I had leave been myself alone. And so would I, but yet, for fashion's sake, I thank the two for your society. God be with you. Let's meet as little as we can. I do desire we may be better strangers. I pray you, Mama more treat writing love songs in their barks. I pray you, are no more of my verses but reading them ill-favoredly. Rosalind is your love's name? Yes, just. I do not like her name. There was no thought of pleasing you when she was christened. What satire is she <laughs> Just as high as my heart. You are full of pretty answers. You have a nimble wit. Will you sit down with me, and we two will rail against our miss of the world and all our misery. I would shine no breather in this world but myself, against whom I know most faults. The worst fault you have is to be in love. And it is a fault I would not trade for your best virtue. By <laughs> my truth, I was seeking for a fool when I found you. He is drowned in the look. Brook, look but in you shall see him. There <laughs> I shall see my own figure. Which I take for a fool or a cipher. I'll tarry no longer with you. Farewell, good. Senor Love. I'm glad of your departure. I do miss your melancholy. <laughs> I will speak with him and play the knave with him. <clears throat> do you hear, Forrester? Very well. What would you? I pray you, what's just a clock? You should ask what time of day it is. There is no clock in the forest. Then there is no true lover in the forest, else sighing every minute and groaning every hour would mark the lazy pace of time as well as any clock. <laughs> Where dwell you, pretty youth? Ah, uh, with the shepherdess, my sister, here in the forest. Are you native to this place? Your accent is something finer than you could have purchased in such a room of dwelling. I have been told so of many, but indeed an old religious uncle of mine taught me to speak. One who knew courtship too well, for once he fell in love. I have heard him speak many lectures against love and the many giddy offenses of women. What were the principles he laid to the charge of women? There were none principled. They were all alike as half heads are, each fault seeming monstrous till his fellow fault came to meet it. <coughs> I pray thee, we count some. No, 
I will not cast my counsel but on those that are sick. There is a young man haunts this forest by writing the name of Rosalind on our barks and thus abusing our young trees. If I could meet that fancy monger, I could give him some good counsel, for he seems to have the quotidian of love upon him. I am he that is so love shaped. There are none of my uncle's marks upon you. He taught me how to know a man in love. Will lower his marks. A lean cheek, which you have not. A blue eye and sunken, which you have not. A beard neglected, which you have not. <laughs> then your hose should be unguarded, your sleeve unbuttoned, your shoe untied, and everything about you demonstrating a careless desolation. But you are no such man. You seem rather point device in your accoutrement, seeming more the lover of yourself than of any other. Very good. How would I can make thee believe I love? Me believe it. I'd as soon make her whom you love believe it. Which I warrant she's apter to do than to confess she does. That is one of the points in which women still give the lie to their consciences. But in good sooth, are you he who writes the verses in which Rosalind is so admired? By the white hand of Rosalind, I am that he, that unfortunate he. But are you so in love as your right? <laughs> Neither rhyme nor reason can express how much. Love is merely a madness, yet I profess curing it by counsel. Well, did you ever cure any so? Yes. One, and in this manner. He was to imagine me his love, and I sent him every day to woo me, at which time I would be changeable, longing and liking, proud, fantastical, inconstant, now like him, now loathe him, now weep for him, then spit at him, that I broke my suitor from his mad humor of love to a living humor of madness. And thus will I take it upon me to wash your liver clean, that there be not one spot of love in it. Fair youth, you cannot cure me. <laughs> I would cure you if you would but call me Rosaline and come every day to my cough and woo me. With all my heart, fair youth. Nay, you must call me Rosaline. Come, sister, will you go? <laughs>
but first begs pardon. Will you sooner be than he that dies and lives by bloody drops? I would not be thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou sayest there is murder in mine eye. Tis pretty sure that eyes that are the frailest and softest things should be called pirates, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart, and if mine eyes can wound thou, let them kill thee. Why now counterfeit to swoon? Why now fall down? Or if thou canst, oh, for shame, for shame, lie not to say mine eyes are murderers. Now mine eyes, pinch I have darted at thee, hurt thee not. And I am sure that there is no force in eyes that can do hurt. Oh, dear Phoebe, if ever you met in some fresh cheek, then will you know the wounds invisible that love key arrows make. But till that time, come not thou near me, for till that time I shall not pity thee. And why, I pray you? What though you have no beauty, must you be therefore proud and pitiless? <laughs> why, what means this? Why look you so on me? I see no more in you than in the ordinary. Ah, oh, it's my little life. I think she means to tangle my eyes, too. No, faith, proud mistress, hope not after it. Tis not your inky brows, your black silk hair, that can intimidate my spirits to your worship. Foolish shepherd, wherefore do you follow her? You are a thousand times a proper man than she, a woman. But mistress, know yourself down on your knees and thank heaven fasting for a good man's love. For I must tell you friendly in your ear, sell when you can. You are not for all markets. Love him! <laughs> take his offer. So take her to you, shepherd. Fare you well. Sweet youth, I pray you, chide ear together. I'd rather hear you chide than this man won't. He's fallen in love with your foulness. She'll fall in love with mine anger. No, I pray you, do not fall in love with me. I am falser than vows made in wine. Besides, I like you not. Shepherd, ply her hard. Shepherdess, look on him better and be not proud. Dead, shepherd, now I know your saying is of might. Whoever loves, love not at first sight. Sweet Phoebe. Ha! What sayest thou, Sylvia? Sweet Phoebe, pity me. Why, I am sorry for thee, gentle Sylvia. Wherever sorrow is, relief would be, if you do sorrow at my grief and love, by giving love, your sorrow and my grief will both exterminate it. Thou hast my love, is not that neighborly? I would have you. Why, that were covet, Miss Sylvius. The time was that I hated thee, and it is not that I bear thee love, but since thou canst talk of love so well, thy company, which erst was irksome to me, I will endure, and I'll employ thee too. But do not look for further recompense in thine own gladness thou art employed. So holy and so perfect is my love, that I shall think it most plentiful crop to glean the broken ears after the man that the main harvest reap. Loose now and then a scattered smile, and I'll live upon it. No, it's not the youth that spoke to me, Ella. Not very well, but I've met him off. He hath bought the cottage and the bonds which little Carla wants his master of. Think not that I love him, though I ask for him. Tis but a peevish youth. Yet he talks well. But what care I for words? Yet words do well when he that speaks pleases those that hear. For sure he's proud, and yet his pride becomes him. He'll make a proper man. <laughs> but sure he's not very tall, and yet for his years he is tall. And his leg is but so-so, and yet tis well. There was a pretty redness in his lips, a little riper and more lusty red than that makes him cheap. There be some women, Sylvius, had they marked him as I had, would have gone near to fall in love with him. But for my part, I love him not, nor hate him not. And yet I have more cause to hate him than to love him. For what has he to do to chide at me? I, he called my hair black and my eyes black. And now I, remember, I am remembered, scorned at me. I wonder why I answered not again. But that's a one. I'll write him a very taunting letter. And thou shalt bear it, wilt thou, Sylvius? Be 
Phoebe with all my heart. The matter's in my mind and in my heart. I'll be bitter with him and passing short. Go with me, Sylvius. <laughs> Pretty you. How can you be better acquainted with me? They say you are a melancholy color. I am so. I do love it better than laughing. Those that are in extremity of either are abominable fellows. Why, tis good to be sad and say nothing. Why then, tis good to be opposed. Mm -hmm. I have neither the scholar's melancholy, which is emulation, nor the musician's, which is fantastical, nor the courtier's, which is proud. No, the lawyers, which is politic. No, the soldiers, which is ambitious. No, the ladies, which is nice. No, the lover, which is all of these. But a melancholy of my own, extracted from many objects, indeed, the contemplation of my travels. Ah, a traveler. You have great reason to be sad. I fear you have sold your lands to see other men's. Then to have seen much and to have nothing is to have rich eyes and poor hands. Yes, I've gained my experience. And your experience makes you sad. I would rather have a fool to make me merry than experience to make me sad. Good day and happy, Mr. Rosalind. Nay then, God be with you. And you, talk in late verse. Farewell, <laughs> Monsieur Traveler. Why, how now, Orlando? Where have you been all this while? You, a lover. Oh, my fair Rosalind, I come within an hour, I promise. Nay, and you be so tardy, come no more within my sight. I had as lief be wooed of a snail. Of a snail? I of a snail, for though he comes slowly, he carries his house on his head, a better jointure than I think you make a woman. But come, woo me, for now I am in a holiday humor, and I'm like enough to consent. What would you ask of me, and I were your very, very Rosalind? I would kiss before I spoke. Nay, you were better to speak first, and after you had been graveled for lack of matter, you might make occasion to kiss. Am I not your Rosalind? It pleases him to call you so, but he has a Rosalind of a better leer than you. Oh, I, I take some pleasure to say you are my Rosalind, because I'm talking of her. Well, in her person. I say I will not have you. Then in my own person? I must die. <laughs> This poor world is almost 6,000 years old, and in all that time there was not any man died of a love cause. Men have died from time to time, and worms have eaten them, but not for love. I protest, my, ro my right Rosalind would not have this right mind, for I protest her frown might kill me. By this hand, it will not hurt a fly. But come, I will be your Rosalind in a more coming on disposition. And ask me what you will, and I will grant it. And love me. Yes. Faith, will I? Fridays and Saturdays and all. And you will have me? I am twenty such. Well, sayest thou. Are you not good? Well, I hope so. Then, can one desire too much of a good thing? Come, sister, you shall be the priest and marry us. Give me your hand, Orlando. What say you, sister? I cannot say the words. <laughs> Come, you must begin. Will you, Orlando? Go to. Will you, Orlando, have to wife this Rosalind? I will. I will win. Why now, as fast as she can marry us? Then you must say, I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. Well, then I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. <laughs> now tell me how long you would have her after you have possessed her. Forever and a day. Say a day without the ever. No, no, Orlando. Men are April when they woo, but December when they are wed. Maids are in May when they are maids, but the sky changes when they are wives. I will be more giddy in my desires than a monkey. I will weep at nothing, and that when thou art disposed to be merry. I will laugh like a hyena, and that when thou art inclined to sleep. But will my Rosalind do so? By my life, she will do as I do. Oh, but she is wise. <laughs> she could not do this. The wiser, the wayward. Make open the doors of a woman's wit and twill out of the keyhole. Stop that twill fly with the smoke. Captain Shiv. For these two hours, Rosalind, I will leave thee. Alas, dear love, I cannot last thee two hours. I must attend the Duke with dinner. By two o'clock, I'll be with thee again. Go your ways. Go your ways. I knew what you would prove. My friends told me as much, and I thought no less. Tis your flattering tongue that won me, but tis one cast away. Two o'clock. 
o'clock is your hour. I see, Rosalind. Then, in good suit, if you break one jot of your promise, or come one minute behind your hour, I will think you the most pathetical break promise, and the most hollow lover, and most undeserving of her whom you call Rosaline. Therefore, beware my censure, and keep your promise. With no less religion than if thou were indeed my Rosaline. So I do. Adieu. <coughs> deep I am in love, but it cannot be sounded. My affection hath an unknown bottom like the Bay of Portugal. Or rather, bottomless, that as fast as your poor affection runs in, it runs out. <laughs> I'll tell thee, Aliena, I cannot be out of the sight of Orlando. I'll find a shadow and sigh till he come, and I'll sleep. My errand is to you, fair youth. My gentle Phoebe bid me give you this. I know not the contents, but as I guess it bears an angry tenor. Pardon me, but I am as a guiltless messenger. Patience herself would startle at this letter. She says that I am not fair, that I lack manners. She calls me proud and says that she will not love me. Well, Shepherd, well, this is a letter of your own device. No, I protest. Phoebe did write it. I say she never did invent this letter. This is a man's invention. Sure, it is and hers. And his hand. Sure, it is hers. It is a cruel and boisterous style. Will you hear the letter? So please you, for I've never heard it yet, yet heard too much of Phoebe's cruelty. She Phoebe's me. Mark how the tyrant writes. Art thou God to shepherd turned, that a maiden's heart hath burned? Can a woman rail thus? I call you this railing? Have power to raise such love in mine. Whilst you chid me, I did love. How then might your prayers move? He that brings this love to thee little knows this love in me. By him seal up thy mind, whether that thy youth and kind will the faithful offer take of me and all that I can make, or else by him my love deny, and then I'll study how to die. Call you this chiding? Alas, poor shepherd! Pity him? He deserves no pity. It is not to be endured. Wilt thou love such a woman? I see love hath made thou a tame snake. Say this to her. If she do love me, I charge her to love thee. Here comes more company. Good morrow. There. What? I pray you, if you know, where in this forest stands a sheep goat fence about with olive trees? What's this place? Oh, brings you to this place, but at this hour, the house does keep itself. There is none with it. I should know you by description. The boy is fair, a female flavor. The woman loves and browner than her brother. Are you not the owners of the house I didn't inquire for? Oh, we are. Orlando does commend him to you both, and to the youth he calls his Rosaline. Sends this bloody napkin. I am he. What must we understand by this? Some of my shame. You will know what man I am, and how, and why, why the hate for Chip will stay. I pray you, tell it. When last the young Orlando parted from me, he left a promise to return again, within an hour, and pacing through the forks, lo, he fell, a wretched, ragged man, lay sleep on his back, a mirror of trees, about his neck, a green and gilded stick, had reasons, but suddenly seeing Orlando, it did unlink itself, and did slip away onto a bush, under which his bush shade, a lion slid crouching, with head on ground, with cat-like watch. <clears throat> this scene, or let him approach the man, he found it was his brother, his elder brother. Oh, I have heard him speak of that same brother. He did render him the most natural that liveth among men. And well he might do so, for well I know, he was. He, he was, or but to Orlando. Did he leave him there, food to the hungry lioness? Twice he did turn his back. But kindness, no poor ever than revenge, made him give battle to the hungry lioness, who quickly fell the fort, from which hurtling of slumber I awake. Are you his brother? Was you who rescued? Was it you who did so often contrive to kill him? Twas I, but twas not I, but the bloody handkerchief, by and by, in 
free. He led me to the gentle Duke who gave me fresh array and entertainment, committing me unto my brother's love. Um, <clears throat> who led me instantly unto his cave. There stripped himself to hear upon his arm. The lioness had torn some flesh away. While all this had fled, he fainted, and upon fainting cried, Rosalind! Faith. I recovered him, bound up his wound, and after some small space, being strong at heart, he sent me hither to tell this story, and to give this napkin dyed in his blood unto the shepherd youth, they his sport he doth call his rest. Oh, 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 me! Speak to me! Many will swim when they do look upon blood. There is more on it. Cousin, get him in. Pray you, take him by the arm. Be of good cheer, youth. You are mad. You lack a man's heart. I do so, I confess it. But tell your brother how well I counterfeited to swoon. Hey, this was not counterfeit. There is too much testimony in your complexion that it was a passion of earnest. Counterfeit, I assure you. <laughs> well then, take a good heart and counterfeit to be a man. Do I, but in faith I should have been a woman by right. Come you at Pellin Pellin, good sir, go with us.
Now they're called giving this a in class. But say with me, I do love Eliana. For it shall be to your good, for all of my father's estate, and all the revenue that was all turned over. Will I stay a part of you? And hereby let me die. You have my consent. Let your wedding be tomorrow. Thither will I invite the Duke and all his followers. Therefore, go you and prepare your alien. For look you, here comes from Rosalind. God save your brother and you for sister. Ah, uh, oh my dear Orlando, how it grieves me to see you wear your heart in a scarf. Um, it's my arm. I thought your heart had been wounded by the claws of a lion. Wounded it is, but by the eyes of a lady. Did your brother tell you how I counterfeited to swoon when he showed me your handkerchief? I am greater wonders than that. Uh, I see where you are. Your brother and my sister no sooner looked but they loved, no sooner loved but they sighed, no sooner sighed, but they asked one another the reason. No sooner knew the reason, but they sought the remedy. They are in the very wrath of love. They will together. Clubs cannot part them. They shall be married tomorrow, and I will invite the Duke to the nuptial. But, oh, I'm sorry, a thing is to look into happiness through another man's eyes. Tomorrow I shall be at the height of heart heaviness, for seeing that my brother has what he wishes for. Then tomorrow I cannot serve your turn for Rosaline? I can live no longer by thinking. And I will weary you no more with idle talking. Believe, then, if it please you, that I can do strange things. If you do love Rosaline, when your brother marries Aliena, you shall marry her. It is not impossible to me, if it seemeth not inconvenient to you to set her before your eyes tomorrow. Speakest thou in sober meanings? I, by my life I do, which I tender dearly. This put you in your best array, and bid your friends come, for if you will be married tomorrow, you shall. Look, here comes a lover of mine and a lover of hers. You, you have done me much on gentleness to show the letter that I writ to you. I care not if I have. It is in my study to seem despiteful and ungentle to you. You are here followed by a faithful shepherd. Look on him. Love him. He worships you. Good <laughs> shepherd. Tell us, youth, what's his to love? It's to be all made of sighs and tears, and so am I for Phoebe. And so am I for Gilby. And so am I for Rosalind. And so am I for no woman. It is to be all made of faith and service, and so am I for Phoebe. And so am I for Gilly. And so am I for Rosalind. And so am I for no woman. It is to be all made of fantasy, all made of passion, all made of wishes, all adoration, all duty, all observance, all humbleness, all patience and impatience, and so am I for Phoebe. And so am I for Ganymede. And so am I for Rosalind. And so am I for no woman. If this be so, why blame you me to love you? If this be so, why blame you me to love you? If this be so, why blame you me to love you? Who do you speak to, why blame you me to love you? To her that is not here, nor doth not hear. I pray you no more of this. Tis like the howling of Irish wolves against the moon. I will help you if I can. I would love you if I could. Tomorrow, meet me all together. I'll marry you if ever I marry a woman, and I'll be married tomorrow. I will satisfy you if ever I satisfy a man, and you shall be married tomorrow. I will content you if what pleases you contents you, and you shall be married tomorrow. You say you'll marry me if I be willing. That will I, should I die the or after. Or if you do refuse me to give yourself to this most faithful shepherd. <laughs> so is the bargain. As you love Rosalind, me. As you love Phoebe, meet. And as I love no woman, I'll meet. So fare you well. I'll not fail if I live. Nor I. Nor I. <laughs>
Well, I'll wait to know. Your abandoned cave. Proceed, proceed. We will begin these rites as we do trust. They'll end in true delights. <laughs> Besides, we're off 
often, our hands are often taught over with, with the surgery of our sheep, and would you have us talk? You told me yourself. The courtier's hands are perfumed with civet. Most shallow man, learn of the wise and repent. Civet is of a bizier birth than tar, the very uncleanly flax of a cat. Then, then the instance. <sighs> you have two court theory upon your touchstone. I'll rest. I am a truly. I earn that I eat, get that I wear. Oh, no man hate, envy no man's happiness, glad the other man's good, content with my harm, and the greatest of my pride is to see my ewes graze and my lambs suck. Some 